Hello guys, Tunia back again. Well, this week we'll do another hardware review. Uh, I managed to pick myself up uh, a Neo Geo Mini. I had a really good deal on it. It was pretty cheap. Um, so I, I've been really, I've seen lots of reviews of these things, uh, and I've seen what's been said, which is generally pretty dreadful. What a lot of people are saying about these things. So I, I wanted to buy one just to see what it was like myself, mainly on the TV, because uh, it's it's had a lot of stick for this TV output. But um, yeah, I picked up one of these little machines. And I bought a joypad, which was uh, an extra, because it doesn't actually come with it unless you buy the newer packs, uh, like the Samurai packs and that. And I had to buy a, a mini HDMI lead as well. So that was a little bit extra I paid for. But anyway, the Neo Geo Mini comes in a really nice box, as you can uh, see by here. I can spin it around, it's got some really nice Neo Geo artwork on it. Uh, it's got loads of games on the back. Uh, cool little box. Um, I say I won't bother unboxing as you can see. Uh, the machine itself uh, is a really cool little machine. I've stuck the little stickers on you. Uh, at the back, you've got uh, a couple of different ports. You've got a headphone jack, and you've got the mini HD. Uh, sorry, that's the USB C connector, and your HDMI connector, a little mini one, and your power button. Uh, both sides, then, you may notice these little holes on the side. This is where the actual joy pads go. And you've got the actual machine itself. Uh, I put, I don't know where we can see in there probably, I put uh, a marquee sticker on it. Uh, comes to your standard buttons. Uh, pity these weren't actually coloured, like the new Joe buttons on the pad. Missed a trick there, really. Uh, but you've got to start and select, and you've got your buttons. Difference with um, this is the buttons are actually... They're the opposite way round to what they would be on a Neo Geo um, CD or Neo Geo itself. Like. So basically, you've got your A, B, C, sorry, A, B, C, and D that way, instead of A, B, C, and D as you would be on the um, CD machines. I think this was pretty much to set this machine up for the King of Fighters games uh, and some of the other games, because basically you got punch, you got a hard punch, uh, so weak punch, hard punch, weak kick, hard kick. I think that's why they changed the buttons and changed the layout. Um, if you're used to the Neo Geo layout, it is a bit of a change. But if you don't mind swapping your buttons around, it doesn't take long to get used to it. So it's not too bad. It is quite useful for King of Fighters. Uh, same with the joypad uh, itself. So you can see where the buttons have been changed around. I'll show you an original Neo Geo CD pad, which I've got by here. As you see, the button layout, if I can put it like that, is slightly different. You've got the A, B down the bottom, then the C, D at the top, and then you've got A and B on the side, and C and D on the side. Uh, difference between these as well, this is an original Neo Geo pad. You could probably hear the clicky buttons underneath, and you've got the buttons themselves. Uh, if you pick up this pad, a little bit of a shame, this pad doesn't have any clicky buttons. It is pretty much like an analog stick. It's got some, it's quite a taut analog stick. Um, a lot of people were complaining about that. The buttons feel just about the same, to be honest. Uh, the stick itself is, say, the stick itself actually on the machine is the same. It's not clicky. Um, I knew this getting into it anyway, because there's a lot of people complained that you weren't getting a clicky stick and the clicky buttons. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, clicky stick. Uh, which is fine, I knew that when getting into this, this stick wasn't going to be clicky. It's more like a like an analog stick, but it does have a nice bit of tension to it. Uh, buttons, like I said, the buttons are fine, there's nothing wrong with the buttons. Uh, this stick as well, I, I will have to say one thing, it may not be a clicky stick, and that's what I would personally rather like to have, but it does work perfectly fine. Uh, you can still do combos on it, you can still do all the moves on you quite easily. It's a, obviously a circular type gate. Um... So it may not be clicky like a proper joystick, but it does work perfectly well. Same with the pad as well. Uh, another one. It might not be clicky, but it does work perfectly well. So it's it's almost like playing um, playing your 2D games on the Switch without actually using the buttons for the, the D-pad and actually just using the analog stick. It's pretty, pretty much the same sort of thing as that. But uh, they work perfectly fine. Uh, so you see the pad, the back, that's where the uh, pad come in. In the box, you get uh, the Neo Geo itself. You get a um, USB-C cable and some stickers. You don't get the HDMI cable, which is a little bit of a shame because you have to buy that separate. 
uh, with the pad, obviously you just get the pad. Uh, pads at the moment, uh, if you look on Amazon, they're going for about 15 quid plus postage, which is rather cheap, cheaper than eBay. Uh, the machines themselves, this version, which is the international one, uh, these seem to be going for roughly about 75 quid. Uh, so you're talking 75 quid, 15 plus postage for the pad, and a HDMI cable, which you can get for about £5. Pound. Um, what I'd say about this machine, uh, it feels really nicely made. Uh, the buttons are nice. All right, it's not a clicky stick, but it, it works perfectly fine. The screen on this thing is amazing. The screen is fantastic. It's really good. As a desktop toy, this thing is pretty awesome. Uh, the pads are really nicely made. Uh, they've got a bit of a weight to them as well compared to the original pads. These, the, these, in, in, Apart from the actual D-pad itself, the buttons are they actually feel a bit nicer quality. Um, they do have a little bit of a heft to them. Good thing about it is, as well, as I hit the camera, um, these pads have got USB-C, which is this connector, but if you buy little adapters off uh, the internet, uh, which you chuck on the end like that, a USB, these things will work on a PC as well. Uh, you just basically plug it in, picks it up as um, a, basically a gamepad, and you can use that gamepad then on, um, on your PC. You can use it on MAME. I've tried it out, and it seems to work perfectly fine. So that's a nice little bonus if you like the pads. So what we'll do is I'll cut the video here and I'll see if I can zoom nicely into this screen and um, I'll show you some of the games running. So give us a second. Right guys, this is what it, um, it looks like on the screen. I will say that I am using an iPad and it hasn't got the greatest camera when zooming in. Uh, so it's not really doing the screen justice to be truthfully honest. When you're actually looking at the screen yourself, it's super sharp. Uh, it almost looks like a, like a really nice uh, CRT when you're running these games on it. There's no ghost in. Uh, the screen is just very, very nice on this thing. But this is just a rough tester to show you um, what the screen is like. So I'll go into the games later uh, when when I plug it to the TV. So we'll just have a quick go of Metal Slug. I just want to show you quickly what it looks like on the screen. I've had to turn the sound right down because it was um, it sort of was a little bit too loud. You've only got a couple of sound options. But we'll go, we'll go for that. Like I'll show you what I mean now. Um, you've got a couple of volume options. Like it's way too loud for what uh, we want it for. So let's start Metal Slug up. They say all the games are like the AES version, so you get all the options and everything. So you can see the emulation is pretty nice on this. Um, I say lag on this emulation, there pretty much isn't any. They must only be down to about a frame or maybe two frames at most. It's really unnoticeable, even on a TV. Like I say, it works pretty well on the actual screen. I say, as a desktop toy, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> Have this on your desktop, so you work wherever and just play some Neo Geo games. Awesome. Really good. So that's what Metal Slug looks like on here. So if uh, we go back, and I'll pick something else. Let's pick, pick Last Resort. I'll do, I'll show you this and then uh, we'll move on to the uh, TV output to this. What is quite nice about this machine as well, you've got a nice blue ring around the actual joystick on the machine, which looks pretty wicked. So this is last resort. So you can still see the nice little detail even with this screen. Even when you're actually in front of the screen, the nice little detail of the enemies falling out of the ships and that. Very impressive. I say it's a shame my camera is not uh, better to really show off what this screen can actually do. 
But we're YouTubing on a budget, so I can't afford to buy a good uh, S, a good uh, SLR camera, unfortunately. I say the detail on this screen is uh, really impressive. Right, so what we'll do is I'll go back to the menus and probably best to check it on the big screen. So uh, we'll pause the video and we'll, um, we'll get it on the big screen. Right, and guys, this is the new Joe actually plugged into the TV. So I got going for my capture card. So um, pretty much we'll run through the menus and see what's actually on. Yeah, first of all, uh, there's 40 games on this device. Which is quite nice, and there's there's forty really good games on here as well. Obviously, being only forty games in the Neo Geo, it's got to be times where people are. Oh, I wanted this game, or I didn't want that game, or I'd rather change that for the other game. It's just the way it goes with these things. They pick forty games and look for the best. There are different versions of this um, Neo Geo Mini that does have diff a few different games on it. So if you are thinking of getting one, it might be worth you looking around uh, to the different versions. And see what games they got on them but we'll run for the games at first so we've got metal slug metal slug 2 metal slug x metal slug 3 metal slug 4 and 5 so that's all the metal slug games that re were released on the new Joe, which is really cool uh king of monsters 1 and 2 uh sengoku 3 i was quite surprised this was on there and um, magician lord blues journey uh we've got the shock troopers games 1 and 2 robo army cross swords uh, mutation nation uh free camp bout i don't particularly like that game uh, King of Fighters, we haven't got them all, but we've got 95, 97, which I'm not particularly fast on 97, uh, 98, uh, 2000, and 2002, so it's not a bad selection. I probably would have preferred to swap out 97 for possibly 94, or um, or maybe 96. Uh, would have been quite nice. Uh, what else we got on here? we got one Art of Fighting game, this is the first one. Shame, probably the second one might have been a little bit better. Uh, fit for special, which is fantastic. Uh, fit for real boat. Shame that wasn't actually real boat special, but you know, it's okay. It's pretty cool. Um, Mark of the Wolves. Uh, we've got Samurai 2 and Samurai 4, which are pretty much one of my two favorite Samurai games. Uh, Samurai Spa Showdown Special. Uh, we've got Last Blade. Uh, World Heroes Perfect. Sooner Encounter. Um, Ninja Masters. And then we've got Top Players Golf. Love our game. Uh, Super Sidekicks, Football Frenzy, and then we've got Blazing Star, uh, which is a really good shmup. Uh, Last Resort, which is also really good. Uh, Ghost Pilots, which is okay. And then we've got one puzzle game, which is Puzzled, which is like a Tetris game. Uh, as I say, the output is in widescreen at the moment, so I, I basically had stretches to fit on, basically to fit in the video when I was reviewing it. Um, if you go up to the options, you've got a help option. Uh, we'll click it on and see what it does now. I uh, go to the new website, uh, official program. Let's have a click on that. Ah, so it gives you QR codes. Uh, and then we've got copyright information. Uh, what first? Uh, public. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we've got the settings option. In the settings option, there's not a lot in you. You basically get your yeah, language. You can turn it back to Japanese if you want. But uh, we got sort by default. Uh, you get on screen set. Basically, you get widescreen. Uh, 4.3 aspect ratio. You don't really want the widescreen ratio. It, it looks pretty bad. Uh, we've got image op optimization, which we will come back to in a minute once I show you a game. So we'll boot out of that. So, seeing as Metal Slug is there, we'll pick Metal Slug. So the games load pretty fast. These are the arcade ROMs, so essentially, well, the arcade or the home ROM, same thing basically. But essentially, you end up with the home version of these games. One big thing that people complained about this, how bad the output is on this game. Let's get it out of the way now. You are not going to get scan lines, you're not going to get the pixel look with this machine because it just doesn't do it, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, you've got two options you've got what you're seeing now which is the game is running through bilinear filtering, which bilinear filtering gives you like, uh, it smooths all the edges off and gives you like a, a, a quite a blurry look. It's pretty much what a lot of emulators do as standard, which is the standard setup and then you can swap. It's a bit of a shame they didn't give you the option to turn this bilinear filtering off because it, it does look super soft and not that great to be honest. But we'll, uh, we'll start Metal Slug up with it.
So a lot of people say, pretty much everyone was saying the output on this machine is absolutely dreadful on TV. Uh, it's like I said, you haven't got the pixely look, but I don't think it's dreadful. But we'll sh we'll run into the other optimization now in a minute. So one thing you will notice this game is the lag on the controllers. It probably is none. Uh, this is pretty damn good. It's maybe a frame or two of lag at the most. At the most, like I can't really detect any lag on you, which is uh, really cool. They've done a damn good job of keeping this as minimal as can with the lag. In fact, I can't even notice the lag. Uh, what you will see is the screen is nicely V-sync, so there's no um, there's no judder on the screen, or there's there's no screen breakup. But if they look at the top portion of the screen for about five percent of the top of the screen you will see or you might be able to see uh, a little bit of a, a jitter which is quite constant which i think is because the new duo puts it uh, 59 point whatever uh, megahertz it's not quite 60 but with the v-sync option they're using on this you get a little jitter at the top of the screen uh, which pretty much you don't even notice when you're playing so it's not really a problem I say the other thing, obviously the buttons on the pads uh, are a little bit back to front, but it doesn't take long to get used to that. Jamie didn't give the option to change your mind, that would have been quite good. We'll blow this up. So that's pretty much uh, Metal Slug using the, the standard bilinear filtering. Alright, it's it's not sharp, it's not scan, li not scan lines, it doesn't have the pixel look. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. So, what we'll do is, you press Start and Select together. Now, what you can do in Start and Select as well, you've got your saves per game. So, there's four saves per game. You've got your load, and you've got uh, the screen options, which we've seen before. Plus, you've got the image optimization. So, we'll pick that one, and we'll turn that on. So when we go back to Metal Slug now, Metal Slug, oh, and pause it. Now, if you may notice, it's all sharper, more sort of in a... They've, they've applied like a high def filter, like a HQX filter, over the top of this. And from a distance, I, th I think this actually doesn't look too bad. It ain't the pixel look, but it's not a bad compromise considering you ain't going to get the pixel look with this. And if I was going to play this machine on the telly, this is the way I'd play it, I think. I think this is the best way you could play it on you. They don't look too bad, like. Alright. It would have been nice if they give you the option for a, a pixel perfect sort of uh, screen, which, you know, a lot of the other minis tend to do. Jump. Kill this thing. Yay. So we will go back in the menus, and what I'll do, I'll show you once more. I'll turn that off again, and we'll go to. We'll pick. We'll pick a nice. Simple game, something that's got Blue's Journey. Quite a simple looking Neo Geo game. Give you the idea what the filters look like. You can see the filter here on the um, Neo Geo logo. So this is the bilinear filtering. As you can see, the writing is a little bit blurry. If I start the game. This is what it looks like with the standard bilinear filtering. Which, you know, it's not great, but it's not it's not hideously bad. If I swap it back to the... Say, I've been playing it basically on the HD filter, because that's the way to do it. This game looks a lot nicer, but it does introduce that slight judder at the top of the screen. You don't really notice it. Yeah. See, the emulation is really nice on this. It's pretty damn good, the emulation. Say, like I said, it's, it's pretty low lag. Uh, pretty much unnoticeable, to be honest. And um, it plays really well. The sound emulation is really nice on you. It's, I would say it's almost perfect. To the point that I think there may be one or two um, sound effects that I thought maybe sound a tad different. But that could just be me. But it seems pretty smack on the sound emulation. In fact, in a lot of ways, I, I'm quite impressed with the emulation on this machine. The emulation is very good. So let's try a different game. 
Apart from the blurry screen filter, of course. So, let's have a look. Let's try Shock Troopers. Tro Shock Troopers is one all... Uh, if you put these on these, any of these hacked mini systems, uh, this doesn't run particularly too well. Tend to get a lot of slowdown on this game. I say I'm using the actual Neo Geo pad at the moment. Um, the one you buy for it. Like I said, it's not a clicky pad, but it works perfectly well. It's quite good for these games. You've got um, get to uh, power ups and stuff off these guys. You've got to, you've got to roll into them basically. They're doing really bad work there. <laughs> Say Shock Troopers uh, 1 runs really nice. Shock Troopers 2 runs uh, very good as well, to be honest. I never noticed the pigs, but they fly out. Dead. That's Shock Troopers, that runs really well. Um, let's have a look. Let's pick a beat em up this time. See, I'll scroll along beat em up. Uh, Robo Army. No, let's go for Mutation Nation. I quite like this game. See, so with that um, high quality filter on, it does make it look a lot nicer. It's a shame it was in scan lines, mine, but yeah. it still doesn't look too bad. I always quite like this game. Jump kicking the enemies is not particularly very good. It's good when they jump at you, though. Well, you can do power-ups in this game as well, I guess. Here we go. Ah, I thought I'd get him in. I see that the lag is very, very minimal. I can't really notice it. Very impressed with that. Like the SNES one is good, but it does it does have a noticeable frame or so of lag on it. But this one feels really nice. This is where the uh, the sort of two button punch thing comes in handy when these enemies uh, jump in at you. That's Mutation Nation, guys. Let's try... Let's try beat em up. It's really going to test this, which would be Mark of the Wolves. Later in the life has come out of the Neo Geo. Very big cartridge. Amazing animation. Really good music. Let's take a little bit longer to load in on you. So let's have story mode. Uh, let's pick rock. Um, I'd say no problems doing the moves at all, like. Didn't give enough time to charge it. You could get used to these joy pads. This game seems to run perfect as well. 
pretty much everything on here seems to run really nice. I've got one more game, I think. Oh, that's a bad move for me. I always wonder if uh, SNK would ever do a sequel to this. Especially now. It'd be good if they did a Fatal Fury game now. I do like the Fatal Fury characters. They always kick my ass. Dead. Right, we'll try one more game. We'll try shooting up this time. We'll try uh, Blazing Star. So let's go for the menus. So that's uh, quite a big game as well. Very pretty one. Yumi Kobo. Right, what ship shall I go? Try that one out. Lots of different ships on this uh, game to try. Get ready. This is a sort of a sequel to Polestar. It's got very pretty sort of uh, pre-rendered uh, graphics in this game. And the bosses look pretty awesome on you. It is a very nice game. Uh, with this machine, I haven't tried any other joypads on it. It might be worth me trying some, get a converter, give way round and try a few pads. Probably not going to work though. Finally, there is a converter you can get for this. I think Brook do a converter. You can use your PlayStation joysticks on you. I'm sure I didn't dream that. You know, then again, I might have dreamt it, but I don't think I did. Yeah, this game runs perfectly fine as well. It's pretty awesome, actually. See if I can get to the boss. I like a ship, actually. Yeah, the faster you fire in this uh, in this game, the better your firing gets. But it's quite hard to keep this firing up. <laughs> this is where um, auto fire would have been quite handy to have, but it, it doesn't have it. I fire quite fast when the slowdown happens, which happens on the original Neo Geo as well, mine so. It's not something that the emulation is doing. That's one dead boss. That's Pulse Star on this machine. Which is quite cool. So we'll go back to the menu. Uh, We'll go back to the menu. Yeah, so the new Joe Mini. Uh, how am I going to sum this up? Uh, I say when I first had it, I, I was expecting it to be pretty rubbish, to be honest. Like, because uh, I did some bad reviews about it, even though I did that the actual machine itself is really nice. Uh, I had it, and I, I will admit the machine itself is pretty fantastic. It's a really cool little mini. It does have a pretty stunning uh, screen on it. Pity my video doesn't really show how good the screen is. Uh, the screen is pretty stunning on it. It's very nice. And as a little desktop uh, machine, this is really cool. Uh, the joystick, like I said, it's not, it's not clicky, but um, it does work perfectly fine. Same with the pads, they're not clicky, but they work perfectly fine. And as a, a desktop unit, it's a really cool little unit. You can imagine that sat in your office or something on the side and a sneaky game of uh, King of Fighters or something on the side when your boss is out. Would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a really nice unit. As for the TV, I was expecting it to be absolutely dreadful from the reviews I've seen. And from the reviews, I was pretty sure it was just bilinear filtering which was on. And yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's a bit of blurry. It's bilinear filtering. 
why they didn't give you the option to turn that off, I don't know, which is a little bit of a shame, because a pixel perfect mode would have been rather nice. Uh, so, so I pretty much would never play it with the bilinear filtering on. Uh, but the H, the H uh, high def filter, um, it's not too bad actually. Once you get used to it, it's it's like a HQX filter that some emulators do. You know, I, I've got quite used to it now, and I, I don't don't mind it. It's it's all right. It's perfectly playable, not a problem, and looks pretty half decent on your telly. But if you are looking for that pixel, maybe a scan lines and pixels look, you ain't gonna get it with this machine, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, the emulation wise, the emulation seems pretty perfect to be honest. You do get that little bit of uh, V syncing towards the top of the screen. Um, but that's that's pretty constant, so that's got to be something to do with the fifty odd hertz that uh, screen. So maybe every like sixteen frames or something, you get a little bit of a jitter. But because it's at the top end of the screen, uh, right in the last sort of like five percent of the screen at the top, you don't really notice it when you're playing anyway. So it doesn't really make much difference. Sound emulation on this is pretty smack on, I think. Uh, maybe there's one or two tones that are slightly off. But all in all, the sound emulation is quite impressive, and it's all in stereo as well, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, so as a package, uh, I gotta, I gotta admit, I, I quite like this new Geo Mini. It is a pretty cool little machine. Uh, it's a pretty nice Mini, and unlike all the other Minis that that have come out, this one's actually got a screen on it. Um, the international version, which I've got, the um, the Japanese version, does look a bit cooler. It has a better sort of um, colour scheme, but doesn't have the cool blue light around the uh, joystick, which is a bit of a shame. But it does look a bit cooler, the Japanese one. And the Japanese one does have more beat-em-ups than other games. So I think international, probably the better one to get if you're not quite into the beat-em-ups. Um, Say so the the other thing you, you do have to take into account if you buy the standard version and you want to play it on the telly, you will have to buy the mini HDMI to HDMI lead, and you will have to get a, a joypad as well because it, it cuts. I'm pretty sure it cuts it off. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, you will have to get a, a joypad as well. Actually, we'll test that. I'll pull the joypad out and see if I can control it. All oh, right, yeah. So you can. You don't need the joypad. You can control it on the TV with the screen. With the actual unit is itself, uh, but that might be a little bit awkward unless you've got a desk or something to put it on. But it does work. Uh, the pads, I say they they're going quite cheap at the moment. They feel really nice quality. They they've got a, a decent weight to them. The plastic feels lovely on them. Um, they're S and K branded. Uh, they feel really nice quality. The buttons feel exactly like the original buttons in the original color. It doesn't have a clicky stick, but then again. It does work perfectly fine. Uh, the top of it, your finger does slide off it a little bit sometimes. It has got a bit of a grip on there, and it does for most of the, most of the time it does actually work. But sometimes your finger might slide slide off it. But you get that you get the same problem with the original Neo Geo pads as well. So you know that's sticking of uh, exactly what they were. Um, yeah, really nice unit. I I'm quite impressed with the unit actually. I, I do think it's a really nice mini system. Um, it's like I said, it, it doesn't have pixel perfect output on the TV, but as long as long as you change it from that blurry mess over to the um, high def, high quality filter, as they call it, uh, the games are perfectly playable on the screen, and they look really nice on the screen, and they they sound nice and they play nice. I love the fact that there's literally almost no lag on this thing. It must be down to about a frame, maybe two at the most. Because I, I literally can't uh, feel it. Uh, I took it on my mate's house the other night as well. And he was playing it. And he couldn't really feel the lag on it either. And he's quite sensitive to it as well. So all in all. Um, would I recommend the Neo Geo Mini? Yeah I think I would actually. It is pretty cool. And now the fact that you can pick these original models up. For about 75 quid. Or if you pay a little bit more. Maybe about 100 ish. I'd have to, I'd have to double check our price. Maybe just over 100 you can get the machine two pads uh, the hdmi lead um, all in one so it's like a complete system so you can have it as a, a nice little machine on the desk or you can plug it into tally and play fighting games with your mate on it so yeah i would recommend it actually it's, it's quite a cool uh, little mini and quite a nice little novelty like i said if you own a neo geo 
uh, you know, th- these minis are not really going to live up to original Neo Geo on a CRT. You know, they're not really for that. Are they at the end of the day, like, you know, none of these minis are even going to hold up to that. I say the PC Engine Mini is coming out and the Mega Drive Mini is coming out as well. They're cool for what they do and they get people who n- never necessarily may have played any Neo Geo games into playing uh, old retro games who can't complain. So yeah, I do recommend it. If you can pick the machine up uh, cheap, yeah, go for it. You might have a bit of fun with this machine. Just don't expect uh, pixel quality sort of um, output on it. Apart from that, it's pretty nice. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the um, review, and I'll um, catch you again next time. Don't know what with. We'll have to wait and see. Bye now.